if you're looking for me, I can be found with a book and a blanket. I love to read. Actually, I guess that wasn't just a past tense thing. This holiday season, my mom actually had to ban me from reading another book until after Christmas because she was tired of me getting lost in my fantasy worlds. I guess that's another important point. When I start a book, I don't just start a book. I'm completely transformed in the world of the main character. Whether that's a glamorous young woman falling in love, or more my style, the lead detective in a murder mystery novel that keeps me intertwined in my fantasy for days at a time. But the one thing that frustrates me about every one of these books is that these main characters never see their misfortunes coming. I mean, really, some of them are so predictable. Why don't they just change their story to one that they want to have? Right, because the books, they're already finished. What about us? How can this apply to our lives? Well, each of our lives is a story. We might be closer to the beginning of ours, or closer to the end of the chapter, or the beginning of a new one. Sometimes those can be a little painful. Fortunately, though, unlike those characters that I'm so frustrated with every time I read, we have the ability to choose our ending. One of the traits that I most admire in people is the ability to be real. So you want to rewrite your life story, and you want it to be one that others will want to read. Step one, be real. One of the most authentic people that I've ever known is my grand aunt Onita. For my 18th birthday, my family got me a scrapbook full of stories. Now in this scrapbook, I read stories of my parents growing up, of my grandma milking cows every morning so that her family could have fresh milk. I read a story about a little girl in Germany in an ice cream shop who just wanted to talk to my papa because he was an American soldier. But I was shocked when I got to my Aunt Anita story. I'd always known that she and her family had taken care of the farm, but I never knew they all did it below the age of 10. I even saw a picture of my grandpa and his little brother who couldn't have been more than eight or nine, climbing a tree and pulling a saddle up with a rope to drop it onto a horse because they were too short to throw it up onto him. I love those pictures and I love those stories. My Aunt Anita taught me to be the same person all the time and never be afraid of stepping up. In this book, I found the stories of real people with real life struggles who find their own stories with everything they have. That's authenticity. The best characters are the ones who are courageous. In high school, I used as a political nursing home. At first, I just kind of wanted to get some scholarship hours and community service hours because I thought it would be a good idea. I didn't really think that I could make friends there. But I was so wrong. On the very first day, I worked puzzles with Shirley. I told stories to Hazel, who turned out to be my next door neighbor growing up. And then, I met Ronald. Ronald's what you call a character. I never met anyone that wouldn't say he was ornery. He gave everyone, and I mean everyone, a hard time, except me. Ronald told me stories about his kids. He told me about losing his legs to diabetes and how hard it was for him to start to use his prosthetic legs. He even asked me to stay in the room while his new rehabilitation coach helped him to stand up for the first time with his new legs. A huge victory in his life. But he was still a jokester. I'll never forget the day that another boy from my school came running across the room to me and said, Amy, Amy, do you see that man over there? I looked across the room, made eye contact with Ronald, he winked at me, and I braced myself for what I was about to hear. He lost his legs in the war. Ronald would even tell the nurses that I was a different person every time I would come to see him. And every time, I would just smile and tell them that I was just a friend. They were so confused. This friend, I came home one day, and my dad told me that he had some news. He said that I'd lost a friend that week, and that Ronald had passed on. I was really upset for a moment, but then I smiled, because I thought about how Ronald had a perfect set of legs now, and how happy he'd be. You see, Ronald had an impact in my life. He taught me that no matter what two walks of life we come from, a connection is not only possible, but it can be very impactful. More than anything, 
He showed me courage. He could have given up when his life story seemed to be handed to him with a double leg amputation. But he turned it positive. I never understood until now why Ronald made up all those crazy stories. It wasn't that he wasn't being real or he wasn't being authentic, but he wasn't happy with the story that he was given. He wasn't just going to make up a new one, but he wasn't going to lay around and be miserable either. You see, I went into that nursing home thinking that I had something to give, but Ronald saw something in me worth spending a little extra time on. And you know what? He changed something. Now, my favorite books, they're the classic love stories. Jane Eyre, The Great Gatsby. Even if you've seen the new Gatsby movie, you probably know. These stories, well, they're tragic. And I believe that's because at our depth, we aren't really loving. If we want love from others, we have to be loving. Somewhere along the lines of high school, I realized that I tend to get hurt a lot. And I guess that's been from a lot of people that I love either were in situations that they either couldn't get out of or refused to get out of. And that hurt, and I didn't know how to deal with that. And so my solution was to build a wall. Brick by brick, a little mortar here and a little there. I built a wall to keep the broken world far away from me. In my own little world, everyone was happy. Everyone had parents that were as loving and wonderful as mine. Everyone had food put on their table that tasted as delicious as the food that was put on mine three times a day, sometimes more. There were even Sonic runs. My own little world was a great place, but it wasn't real. And honestly, it was a nice illusion. But then I went to Washington Leadership Conference, and I realized that caring isn't enough. I have to do something about it. And so a wrecking ball went through my wall. You see, my number one life ambition is to one day hear my Savior say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And if that's going to happen, then I was going to have to start loving others with the love like Jesus showed me. Fast forward three years. This whole loving others thing, it's going great. I'm in college now, but I still live on a dirt road at home, and so my car is filthy. I pull into an automatic car wash. I deposit my $4, and as I'm graphing about how expensive this car wash is, I pull in until the red light comes on, and I sit. And for exactly three minutes and 50 seconds, I'm staring into the front porch of a homeless shelter. Now, for those three minutes and 50 seconds, my mind is going crazy. I am desperately trying to rebuild this wall so I can crawl back into my own little world and act like I hadn't seen a thing. But after you know, you're responsible, right? So I had a decision to make. So what did I do when that green light came on? Well, did I go to the grocery store and get some groceries to bring back? Did I even go next door to McDonald's and bring back one single hamburger? No. I pulled up, I turned left, and I drove away. And I didn't even look in my rearview mirror. And every day for the next two weeks when I drove by that homeless shelter, I didn't look. Because any other option was just simply too painful for me. Fast forward another three weeks. It's time for state contests, and everyone has done amazing. We're having an awards reception, and we have a lot of food. We have a lot of food left over. And Mr. Hayes from Prairie Grove says that he wants to take it to a homeless shelter. Now, I'm automatically interested by this because I want to know if it's going to help those same people I saw that day. I want somebody to help them. I just didn't want to be the one to do it because I was too scared. But then he asked the question that I've always been afraid of. He said, Amy, would you like to take this food to the homeless shelter? Well, now there is a massive World War III going on in my head. I know that I have a decision to make. And I can go on with the mentality of love, or I can finally, once and for all, choose to make
make it an action. I weigh my options. Love is a mentality. Love is an action. Love is a mentality. I knew that love was an action, and so I picked up the food, and I put it in my car. And so when the boys and I headed down the street, now I did have to circle the parking lot once, because getting out of my own little world was pretty scary for me. But as soon as I stepped out of the car, a man recognized my jacket. And he told me what an amazing organization the FFA was, and what an impact it had made in his life. I thanked him, and as I walked past him, I walked in the homeless shelter, I put the food on the table, as I came out, a group of little girls came running towards me, barreling, with these pictures of lemonade in their arms. Now this lemonade is overflowing. It is coming out of their pictures and covering them. These little girls are drenched with lemonade. So this group of seven and nine, eight-year-olds run up to me and all simultaneously say, would you like some lemonade? Now, this is another decision point for me, because really, I don't like lemonade. But as I looked at those little girls, I realized this wasn't about lemonade at all anymore. These girls have been given negative situations their entire life. They've been given lemons their entire life. A story that might not have been very favorable if they turned it positive. And here they were making lemonade and giving it to a stranger. And here I was, so afraid to get out of my own world, so afraid to step out of my bubble, out of my comfort zone, over my wall, afraid to get hurt that I can't even love. What is that about? So I looked the girls in the eye, and at that moment, I saw without a doubt that love is an action. And I said, I would love a glass of lemonade. And as I poured me my lemonade, giggling, overjoyed to share, I realized something. You know, love is given to be given away. If we keep it to ourselves, we just grow bitter. And my heart broke a little bit at that moment because, not because I regretted going there, or not because I was hurt, but because that wall that I've been clinging to my entire life so that I could be safe from the broken world that <laughs> had a wrecking ball put through it, but never crashed down. It finally crashed down all the way. Those girls changed my life with just a single glass of lemonade. I want you to hear this. So if you're distracted, if I've lost you, maybe someone next to you smells awesome, or maybe you're worried about if you're feasting. Forget about it for just a second. But if it's the second one, Put your cheese back on. Maybe no one's ever told you this. Or maybe someone didn't quite live up to it. Whatever situation you come from, but I'm about to say it's 100% real. You matter. You're worth it. And I love you. Don't you ever forget that. Maybe you haven't been the most amazing person lately. I told you that I believe in being real. So I'll be being real. I'll be real with you. I'm not proud of who I used to be, but I changed that, and you can too. That's the cool thing, because we're not like those characters in the stories. We have the ability to change our legacies. If you choose to today, you can leave your past, you can leave what your future looks like right now in your seat, and when you walk out those doors, your future can look different. You have the chance to redefine the kind of legacy you leave. Choose to. This world we live in is not a perfect one, and the world needs you. Stop waiting on someone else, because the world needs you. You know, the world will tell you that it's okay to be mediocre. The world will tell you to take care of yourself, because no one else is your job. But I'm telling you that if we ever want this world to be a better place, if we want to leave it better for those after us, none of that's true. Because it will never be okay for a child to be hungry, it will never be okay for a, a, a family to not have a home, and it will never be okay for a city to live in terror. We live in a broken world full of broken hearts and broken relationships. Men in the world, be more.